Hello, viewers of internet activity that have to do with cars. Welcome to this. My 1974 RA21 Toyota Celica Resto Mod with a 2005 Toyota Tundra 2UZ FE V8 swapped into it. If you're new and you'd like to get caught up on why it's not polite to use pigeons as footballs, up above my head is a ranger. This right here, full of Japanese newspaper. What? I love that. Is full of genuine Toyota parts. Look at all these labels. I must consult my tech data, what the press says. Written for the intelligent owner who wants to understand the construction and workings of this car and who is not afraid to pick up a spanner and dismantle it. Solely for the purpose of cleaning in areas where no one will ever see. That part I might have added in. Holy taxidermy cheeseburgers. What is going on with this? This is supposed to be rubber. This is like dark chocolate that you shouldn't buy from a gas station because it's probably not good for you. And also, for those of you who have short attention spans and just like loud noises and explosions, I have something else exciting for you planned in this video. Oh, I dropped the screw. No. Oh, there it is. In the last video, we dove into the subject of good quality ah. trim. And in this video, we're continuing with that theme. However, this time it's the side pieces that need to get some attention. It didn't take very long to rub these ones out. Just starting with a 400 grit and working my way up to a 2000 grit, they look like new again. Same with the glass. Gotta keep those old school decals that were on this car when I bought it. This makes me so happy. The fact that it's genuine OEM parts and this car is 50 years old, well, 49. I should put some Gumi Pflegerstift in there. Detailing cabinet, version 2.5. Give this nice treatment. Regulators! Mount up. Swapping engines, easy. Rebuilding this Rue Goldberg nightmare fuel looking thing. Oh, they're color coded red and blue for left and right. Huge shout out to Rick at Toy Head Auto for instructions on how to replace all of these bushings. What happens to these window regulators over time is on these little studs, there should be little plastic cogs that allow it to ride up and down in the rails as your window goes up and down. But as you can see, mine doesn't even have any because they deteriorated long time ago. Surprisingly enough, these ones are still in perfect shape, as is the little foam guy that goes by the crank. Finger sanders are the one tool that you never knew you needed and lived completely fine without until you have one and then you realize they're absolutely amazing. It's a lot of work, but when this is all done, my windows are gonna go down quicker and smoother than a drunk person playing Jenga. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that works. Don't worry, I'm not gonna leave raw steel without the zinc coating there. Solution, cold galvanizing compound. It's not super pretty, but it'll get the job done. If I had a staff with a bunch of people on hand to send this to the zinc coater, I would absolutely do that, but I gotta do what I gotta do on my own. Check that out. Rollers. The little blue spacers go underneath and these are just nut certs and then the little Teflon wheels held in of some hardware that I put a little bit of Loctite on just in case. Shinitsu, made in Japan, silicone grease. So the wheels on my front regulator actually are still in good shape. Everything works. Yes, I have the parts right here to replace them, but they've lasted 49 years. There's no signs of any dry rot or cracking on them. I have the parts if they ever fail, but I just, they're serviceable still. So I'm gonna leave them. I'm not gonna destroy them. I'm gonna lube them, but um, why, why break them to fix them? This, however, is destroyed. <laughs> That was really bad. The little guy goes just like that. If your foam has the consistency of astronaut food and your grease the consistency of a crayon, it's time to replace it. All of these little bushings on the outer pieces of the glass are completely deteriorated 
and just crumbling and falling apart on this car. Okay, fresh lube. This attaches to the glass. This is sitting inside the door. This slides inside here, but if you see, there's a wheel missing. I love it when people come up with creative solutions using other things to fix problems, like using a nut sir as essentially an axle for a plastic wheel to roll on. However, I could see if you over tightened these, you would make it swell and cause that little plastic wheel to stick. All right, now test it. There you go. At this point in the video, you're probably thinking, man, that was super easy. Just wham, bam, 15 minutes for the work, windows back together, throw them in, start the car up, fire it up, projects done. But uh, in all actuality, this took about six hours to reassemble these window regulators and put them in the door. The door is not even assembled yet. And this was six hours worth of work for one door. So this is what they talk about when they say that the last 20% of a project will take 80% of your time. Oh yeah, the door handle. I can't do that until I have the door handle in. I'm torn on what to do right now. I wanted to wet sand and cut and polish the car, but if I put the door handle in, which I have to before the glass goes in, that just, that... <sighs> Do 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 Welcome to the next day. I am on a mission with a forklift. That is my engine fully complete. It's a 2000 grit interface pad. It's got a little bit of black because I use it on the Supra. Here goes nothing. Welcome to Sarah's detailing class. This guy. As much as I'd love to continue the cut and buff on this car, I want to wait until all the work is done because it'll inevitably get some swirls and scratches just from rubbing up against it when it's covered in dust. And that right there is what I'm going for. I still want a tiny bit of texture. I don't want it perfectly flat. That way it looks kind of OEM, but better. If you had to ask me what the most difficult part of this entire project was, I would refer you to this video right here. There's a tiny gasket inside the handle. There's not a big one that you would expect. Getting the door in window alignment is so critical. I think that works. That, yeah, it's in there. And this is why you make marks on the regulator, so you can line it up exactly where it was. Oh, this one's gonna suck. How the fuck do I do this? No way. I got it. Window crank, moment of truth. Have I success? Yeah, look at that. Man, that goes up nice. Before I did this, the top of the glass, when it was all the way up, was super floppy. But because of this little wheel right here that I replaced, it keeps it in position so it doesn't flop around in that channel right there. It goes up even nicer. <laughs> what makes this so difficult is what I have not shown you yet. That is the adjustment of the glass as to when the door is closed. If you get this wrong, You'll either A, shatter your window when you shut the door, or B, have an annoying whistle while you're driving down the road where it sounds like a guy is sitting in your back seat, missing his front tooth, and spitting all over the back of your head. Hello, Tamara. Welcome to day three. I spent 10 hours on window regulators yesterday. That's ridiculous. I said I'd get to this in a little bit, but I wanted to make some progress on windows, so. These are really nice wood screws. It looks so good. 
So nine months and $16,000 later, I got my dad's engine back. It has a fully forged bottom end with higher compression pistons, ported heads, upgraded cams, while still retaining VVTI, variable valve timing intelligent, and most importantly, it's not a fucking LS. I don't think I could really stick these valve covers on just yet because I used my homemade vapor blasting cabinet on them and they don't really have the finished sheen that I want. I think I need to get a different type of glass bead and redo them one more time. This is an engine bag, keep it clean. I bought it because I knew I was gonna need it for the shop here. And uh, it's a good thing because it didn't come with one. Now that you've seen that, you'll see it again in the next couple of videos. Nerve wracking, super nerve wracking. I know you guys just want to see that engine plopped in and then turn key and fire up, but that's not how cars actually get built, despite what you usually see on YouTube. How do I do? How, is, how do I even do that? How do I even screw? <sighs> 30 minutes later, just when I thought I had it, the track up here, I see a little cog wheel. Well, I can get that one on the track, but the one that's right there, that wheel needs to go on that track. But the only way to get the wheel on the track is through the top. That's not possible with the glass in its place. So it's all gonna come back apart again. I gotta be super careful because I don't want these sharp pieces of metal marring the back of this panel and causing outward dents. After consulting with my tech data, it says that the bell crank and the regulator assembly is essentially the last step because it's reverse order. It doesn't make sense in my mind, but I'll do it. Regulator is out. You know that game Operation where you gotta take the organs out of the chest of the plastic dude? This is like that, but shittier. Round number 6322, go. All right. I'd rather have a milkshake made out of glass shards than do this again. I think I'm striking an average of about a day per window on this car. <laughs> That's not good. Genuine Toyota parts made in Japan. You see how this works? I show you something exciting and then... Don't worry, the more this that happens, the more exciting stuff will be left towards the end of this project. Gentling. a job for fucking nope. This is such a satisfying feeling, these little plastic ribbed clips going into their hole. That didn't mean to sound sexual at all, but this is very satisfying. Ready? Oh yeah. <laughs> It's crazy how good a condition this hardware is. I didn't even do anything to it. This is literally how it was when I took it off the car. It looks brand new still. The biggest difference between the aftermarket reproduction weather stripping and the genuine Toyota stuff, this one has butyl. And I need to stick the butyl mm, stick. There, that's beautiful. Is this Toyota stuff fits. The first try, you don't really have to massage it into place. Whereas the weather stripping for this car around the windshield and the back glass were aftermarket, they require a lot of finesse to make them fit. I just realized I'm missing the drip rail. These right here. Mm, yep, these need to be cleaned. It's all full of goo. Uh, it goes underneath all that, and then it continues the drip edge. These are gonna be at least another couple hours worth of work to get them all cleaned up and polished and back on the car. So that means, go, go, really need to hook up a steering wheel on this thing.
Welcome to day number four in this video. I know I'm late on an upload, but I figured I'd knock this all out in one video. This right here is the back window. In the last video on this car where I had Beck the glass guy come out to do the front windshield, which is the original windshield on this car along with all the other windows, they are 49 years old and still in good shape. He had a bit of difficulty with these front rear windows though because the weather stripping is not genuine Toyota. They no longer make it for those two glasses. But nevertheless, he was able to get it installed with the stainless steel trim. When you first started out, was this the bulk of the cars you were working on? Yeah, a lot of them are like this, yeah. We do a lot of Ford Pentos. They were exactly like this. Really? Yeah, the Ford Pinto had the gas here, chrome, just like that. So they were all kind of doing that same style. You know? Well, now that you just saw what I'm in the process of editing. That means I'm down to only one more window left to install on this car. If you've made it to this point in the video, I wanna thank you for sitting through this and watching something that's extremely difficult to try to film and make interesting for YouTube. The next video, I wanna get working on the engine for this car and start assembling it. But before I can drop it in here, I need to have headers custom fabricated. And that's where I run into a bit of a dilemma because my old resident fabric cobbler now has a new engineering job. The boys next door have more work than they can keep up with, so I don't know how I'm gonna get fetter, fetters, fetters headicated. So that's my next challenge you gotta overcome. If I had 10,000 hours to master TIG welding, I'd just do it myself, but I don't have time to even grocery shop, so that's not gonna happen. I'll see you guys soon with another video, bye.